Hello there everyone, and welcome back to Napoleon Total War 3 with this Russian campaign. Last time we had an absolute mess of the Third Battle of Milan. I blame it on a lot of different things, but let, let's just move on from that mess and uh, try to build something new, shall we? Or think of new strategies to improve on the mistakes that were made in the Third Battle. Um, we were at number though. Here, come, here comes the excuses. Right, so after that I had a lot of thoughts of where to go. Should I push forward, try to go bold and deeper into France and attacking what could possibly be undefended territories down in the south? Should I enact my plan of going down and taking the city-states of Italy? What, what should my plan be when I notice the French have moved in and they've taken Bohemia and Prague? So that's put a lot of pressure on Vienna. We need to move out and defend Vienna. Also, with that sort of shift from going from the south to kind of going to the, to the north, we, we're going north. Uh, maybe not that you would call this region the northern part of Europe, but we're going north anyways. And with that, I have another idea. Hopefully, first of all, first of all, we'll capture, recapture Prague and give it back to the Austrians and uh, shore up the front line against the French. But the second thing is, the Prussians are currently at peace with France. But they are at war with all of France's ally. It wouldn't take too much to uh, convince them to join in again. And I think one of, the re one of the things that we could do is we could move our troops, since we're allied with them, we should be able to move our troops through Prussian territory, move it to attack Hanover, take Hanover, give it to the Prussians in return for them declaring war on France. While we're up here, we might go ahead and attack the Mecklenburgians, because they have not signed a peace treaty with us. Now, they are allied with Denmark, but that, that just means that we can attack Denmark as well. And I'm pretty sure our ally, Sweden, would have no problem in joining in that war. Um, so, that's the plan for the day. Also, I'm moving my... Um, my gentleman over from the uh, university, since it's on fire. There's no point in him being there, and there's no books to read because they're all on fire. So we're going to move over to France instead and try to steal technology. If we go ahead and take a look at France, we can see that they, they have some technologies that we want to steal. They have two naval technologies that are better than us. Um, looks like they're a bit poor in the social studies. A lot of those are lacking. Because I have uh, some of the very early ones here. So they've gone maybe all for war? Not sure. I'm surprised here that they don't have more technologies. If you go over to take a look at, say, Britain, they have a lot more. And even the Austrians, I think. So what we want to do is we want to move away. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move first and foremost. Wrong army, wrong army. I was going to move the other army. God. I, it seems I am still quite tired. <laughs> I was going to move the other army into that so the Katusov's army could freely move without. And now we know that it's Ney that's in the region. So one of Napoleon's... Greater Generals is in the region. And, yeah. I should have moved this guy in first. Then uh, Kutusov could have moved, moved freely. We're going to put this guy on the bridge. Uh, Benningsen. So that saves these two from being attacked. If Ney wants to attack, he'll attack us on the bridge. And he'll have to f go through this army before he gets into the weaker state of this army. At the same time, I think this should be now reorganized to go that way. And I want my spy also to figure out what's going on in Bohemia or 
what is going on in Prague. We need to find out that, and pretty darn quickly as well. I want to... I, I, I want to gain something from this region though, so we're going to give it to the Austrians. And we're going to demand a technology I want, Field Ambulance. So that gives me two replenishment. Um, I'm going to offer them two technologies. Oh, two technologies I'm going to offer. I am going to offer them the region of Milan and I'm going to offer them a thousand gold. And so the, these proposals have little to command them and therefore we must reject. It seems it happens quite a lot in Napoleon. The, the AI kind of moves into early on, they're pretty open. You can trade with them, technologies and whatnot. But after a while, you get into this... I don't know what it is, if it is because you... I don't know what it is. To kind of switch it over. And suddenly, even if you give them, you know, your, an arm and a leg, they still... Well, if you gave them an arm and a leg, of course they wouldn't. But I mean, like, metaphorically, if you gave... You know, you know what I mean. If you give them a lot of stuff... Even against a tiny little thing, I still won't do it. So in this case, I was a, I was even giving a rich region of Milan, and all this, and still the Austrians said no. I really want this, and the thing is, is if I switch over and start researching that, it's gonna take me 12 turns. I have really poor. Um, replenishment rate right now for my troops. I want those 2%, so we're gonna offer more. I'm gonna give you all of this. I'm gonna give you... Maybe it's to giving them the region that they don't they don't actually want that and give them a thousand gold. How about that? Maybe it's giving them the region. What if we just gave them a straight-up technology switch? No. Uh, what if it's technology switch plus the thousand? Uh, and it must be rejected. Okay, so I... What if I pay more then? I th it seems to be... I'm guessing it's just kind of down to the gold. Um, like it's going to be the gold that is going to sway them. How about I give you three thousand for it? No? Is it going to be worth... is... 2%, 12 turns... I'm going to give you all of this. Plus 4,000. That's my final offers. And... Then they are okay with it. You're a really shit ally, aren't you? 4,000. But now I've got those 2%. It would be nice if this actually ticked it up to at least, like, the, um... I think there's a yellow one, or is it just red and then goes to green? 2%. It's a little bit better than the, better than before. We gain, like, a little bit more. But god damn it, Austria. You cheap bastard. Alright. Um... Oh yeah, I want to see about that trade thing. We're gonna... Check the trade node, build a ship, and yeah, we're gonna. I'm probably gonna end turns pretty quickly here as to move through to where we can find a battle and see what's actually going on here. Hopefully, in that time, we won't be losing Vienna to the enemy. We gave up uh, Milan region, and actually, actually, um, the entire thing is now a lot worse than it was before because now the French hold this really good region which produces a lot of money. Now luckily for me even with a full stack it's actually unhappy so maybe a revolt will occur and uh, will cause a lot of trouble for the French but still that's not very nice. They have a pretty... That's a good region. Okay, so it looks pretty okay up here if there's a 
Austrian general this far into Bavaria means that hopefully it's not this region isn't too bad. This guy is going to continue on his trip to Paris. Even the uh, look at this. Even the Swiss moved in an army here, so now this full of French and uh, Swiss troops. But this is no longer our cause, so we continue to march to aid the Austrians in the north. Our campaign in Italy turned to shambles and in actual fact probably, uh, as I've already mentioned, uh, probably aided the, um, aided the French more than it aided us. So that's all the armies moved. And uh, let's see. I what did 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 the English have any technologies? Grand battery would be nice. Let's see if the English are a little bit easier to trade with them. I'm probably gonna have to be quite generous though. So three to one. Oh, they they. At least you can trade with the English. This one would be nice. Or maybe. Um, Campaign and in battle. That's a lot to have them, but I'm not looking for naval battles, am I? Modern rifles. How about that? No, they would need three. Austria. Grand batteries versus modern rifles. How about that? Regrettably, what about? Oh, so, sorry. What about the Prussians? Oh, the Prussians have a lot. They have horse breeding. Abolished slavery, metric system, metric system would be nice. 10% extra there. What is this? Army movement range would be good. Katusov's army is pretty slow. But metric system will allow me to produce better. Let's go with three. And the thing is, since they're ally, it doesn't. It's not that bad to give them a load. Yeah, nice. We're able to trade through that. But we're. Tr I mean, the amount of stuff we have to give everyone. Sweden has abolished slavery. Plus happiness and minus recruitment. Uh, sure, we'll abolish slavery as well. We'll give, we'll give you all. Why not? We'll be delighted. Great. I'm sure he will because the, the these are not good trade deals. Uh, well, they are good because I gain something and. Um, the AI doesn't get that much. Next turn I'll be getting uh, the National Census which will enable Inspire, which will be good for Russian bayonet charges. Then Minus Recruitment is good as well. But can, let's continue on our road to uh, Prague. I was a little bit careless here and I just started marching. I didn't think they had marched forward any troops out of Bohemia. I thought they were just holding there. Turned out Napoleon was just on the border here. I was unable to stop the advance of Bagration before he moved into Napoleon. And I should also mention I was really scared in the end turn in between these turns here. Because he crashed when it turned over to the Hessians' turn to do their, or Hessen Kessel, to, to do their turn. And I thought, oh shit, there's some move here that they make to break the game and I won't be able to affect it and it'll screw up the entire campaign. I loaded up the game again with the anticipation like, oh, it's going to crash again. And then it rolled on and it works out fine. Um... Is there any way the Bagration might be able to break Napoleon? Could be. But it's going to be a very bloody battle. I see that he has tons of heavy cavalry that will be able to just overrun my troops, which a lot of them are recruits and just the musketeers. So we'll end up in kind of a similar situation in Milan where I cannot use my charges to charge down the enemy infantry. I'll be forced to move into square to protect against all this heavy cavalry and slowly whittle down by French fire. 
and so on. In this, th in, lucky enough, Napoleon wasn't hiding in a wood. He was uh, just out there, so it's an interception rather than an ambush. So Bagration is able to retreat. Uh, however, having Napoleon there dampens my plans for an attack on Prague. He will, however, with his retreat there, allow me to get a lot of troops within position there. L and now, look, when we're in the capital of Vienna, we're close enough to get tons of replenishment. It could be... I don't think it do, it do, uh, the mass mobilization doesn't add to replenishment, but you, you can imagine in a kind of role-play way that if we start introducing mass mobilization, that that would, in fact, increase the replenishment rate because there would be more troops to send to the front. In this case, I don't think we'll follow up with that. Conscript infantry tactics. Militia morale, standardized artillery, we'll, we'll, we'll go with that, I think, for now. Trade unions, 2 plus happiness, minus wealth generated, hmm, but the happiness is pretty good. Even though it's a 5% minus for another stuff, we'll go with military for now, we need to beat the French. So, I was lucky there that it didn't break. Damn. If I had more spies, I, kn I would have known that Napoleon was there. It's interesting, there's another Austrian army moving in. So the Austrian army that was down here was destroyed. The French moved out in force and destroyed him. So I guess maybe the um, the Austrians were trying to do some kind of pincer maneuver, but they were uncoordinated and one half got destroyed. The other one is now stuck far behind enemy lines without the second claw of the pincer, so that's not going great. And, as another note, the uh, Dutch are back, but this time the, uh, the, uh, the, um, what's it called? The Kingdom, the Kingdom of Holland is back. So I'm trading with them. I'm the first one to set up good relations. At this point, I feel like I've done so much pre-talk to the battle that this is going to be a pretty long video, but there are some interesting developments that I hope you enjoy. So, could be that we're either stopping an attack coming in from the front, or if I'm just going to gather all my armies and try and take on Napoleon. Oh, before I end turn here, we've got this third force moving in as well, or fourth force. And with the replenishment now be given to Bagration, uh, his army surely will be in fighting order in no time and will meet Napoleon in the field. Quick overview of what happened. Napoleon retreats from the border. This army sees off a French army that attacked it. Not sure for how long they will stay though as they're back behind enemy lines. And that's about it. I will concentrate my force. And we'll see if we can drive the French out of Bohemia. Finally, we've moved within attack re or attack range, attack region, attack range of Prague. Most likely, it is actually Napoleon. Yes, it is Napoleon. He's moved his armies back, and he's now holding Prague. He's got this army, but that one was actually beaten by the Austrians over here, and they have since been reinforced. And there's struggling or straggling forces moving in to aid them. This is, by the way, I believe, the best unit that the Austrians have in their army. Or at least it was when I played as them. There's also Austrian troops on the way. And look at what we have here. If we can get the Prussians to join in, here's four full stacks ready to join. Like, why aren't they going in against Napoleon? It must be clear that Napoleon... Well, it isn't actually clear that Napoleon is losing. Um, it, but, I mean, if they join in, they def it definitely would be. 
We're gonna strike. I'm not gonna wait for um, Kutuzov and uh, Buxhoven's army to be ready because we cannot all be fighting all the battles with this army. We have to train up some of the others. So we're gonna attack with Benningsen and Bagration. And I think we should let Benningsen lead the attack rather than um, uh, Bagration. Just because I do want the unicorn, so we can we can move that up in the um, among the troops that needs to come in first. Uh, but uh, we're gonna have uh, Benningson since he's the senior general there to attack. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna move within range of Napoleon to attack us and see if he intercepts us. He does. And we do not get support here. Hopefully, though, it's a bridge battle where we can make... Why am I not getting supported? Why is it because Napoleon's got some some train or something that allows him to attack like this? We do not get support. Would I? Put, the thing is, I've been dragging on for too many turns. I can pull back, get more troops in, and... You know what? We're going to beat him right here. We're going to beat him. There's going to be a bridge. There's going to be a bridge. And I'm going to slaughter him trying to move over it. With that, let's attack. Not at all what I expected. I get, because it's an intercept battle, or it's, I don't know how it works, but it actually gets... Na Napoleon is defending the town, and that's how it worked. So it was an interception, but it's Benningson that is attacking. I don't know how it works. Um, we're gonna set up in one of the corners though, to try and offset the French. And I think this one looks fine. I guess bec yeah, because Napoleon's got more stars, he's a higher star general, that means that he'll... Uh, we do not get to see where he's deploying his troops. This is actually quite bad. Um, I do have some strong units. My mouse is still acting up. Here's the, um, the infantry units. It's still <laughs> causing quite a bit of problem for me. Light infantry. And grenadiers. We'll deploy pretty thick to start off with, just because there's so many heavy cavalry units in the French side. With that, let's go ahead and start the battle. Oh! Ooh, that's a pretty nice target for my artillery. I saw a pretty big pink mist shoot up from over there. Napoleon is the only one that wasn't deployed in there. Okay, um... I don't mind shooting at that clump for quite a bit. That's the ploy, the troops. Um, hmm. Let's deploy this one on that side. We're gonna go full... Full tilt, as it were. And then we're gonna kind of move in as this clump moves to actually attack us. It's still gonna be very dangerous, even though I'm gonna have them in kind of a half circle. So, still be quite dangerous when we attack them because they're gonna attack out and they're gonna force us into squares and stuff like that. Right now, though, where this cannon's kind of killing it. All right, let's speed it up uh, to get our army into position so I can start advancing. Oh, there's Napoleon's balloon. Imagine if this was like Shogun 2 and I could go and personally aim the cannon. I wonder if we'd have enough of an elevation to shoot down his balloon. It's a very fancy balloon with gold um, gold birds on it. 
Or pheasants, I guess. Oh, I can move. I can move pretty close without having the FPS tank completely. I can be about at this distance and I still get 30. This is the first time, though. Like, this is uh, what? Episode 7? And it's the first time we actually see this problem, uh, which is one that is often cited when you talk about. Uh, Napoleon Total War uh, 3. No, I mean, for most of the battles we've had, this has not been like a major problem. Um, and the AI has been super aggressive and it's been really cool battles. It's, as soon as we um, start shooting at these guys, I'm pretty sure the uh, clump is going to attack us and it's going to be one hell of a battle. This guy looks very much like uh, Katuso as well. It's just that he doesn't have like a heavy cavalry guy next to him. He's got a hussar instead. Yeah, you don't have to go your sh sh do your little toot toot at me. Damn! The hell! I thought I thought this would be bad enough. There's a huge clump of troops there as well. Kind of causes a problem for my plan. I thought I'd be enveloping just this, now I have to hold off this as well. And that means such a focus will come down on that side. Oh, they seem to be... are they moving out? I'm not sure they are. Because what we'll do is we'll have this side be the one to move on them. While this one stays a little bit more what we'll do is we'll have two units going like that through the forest with this one already protecting that way. Not moving further up though, as we can see that if he would be placed here he couldn't fire up this slope. Let's go ahead and uh, barrage again to get more shots in. Probably actually need the general over here because here's where they most likely gonna break. And then we'll have need a heavy cavalry charge to counter the enemy's cavalry charge. I can tell the cannon to hold fire and then the lancers can move through here and get their attack going in against the French. The plans are set in motion. What is Napoleon doing? He's holding a speech, I imagine. The Glory Hound. Right, now they're uh, actually called into action. Hold fire though. Wait. Until they get closer. Now fire. Because you fire too early here in the woods. Most of the shots will be soaked up by the, by the forest. Okay, they're sending another unit. Okay, now they're marching it against us. Hold! It's the Karaziers. Heavy volley. But I don't think too many of the cavalry units were destroyed by... ...the musketry. As much as they had already been shot by. Ooh, might have been a mistake not to form these guys into square because now there's two units of Grazier going straight at these lines. Doesn't look like they'll be able to force their way through though. Why aren't you firing at what? Cavalry is broken. Hold your fire and reload. And then we'll advance on the infantry. This is a... Uh, this is kind of an anticlimactic battle fighting against Napoleon, it turns out, like this. The cavalry has been dispelled. It is in his proper army, anyways. So there's no guards or anything. Now it's just this mess of infantry. The Ulans don't have uh, range to move anymore on the, in the middle. Oh, 
Oh, his infantry is called out in a charge. Hold it! Oh, fire! Give them everything we've got. Oh shit, I marched into that one. Let's swing around with the heavy cavalry. This unit, these two units ended up in quite the pickle. We have some French units breaking. Here comes my alarm. There's 160 of them. Counter those guys and artillery hold fire at this point. It's an absolute mess. Now, charge. We've got them. Now, break them. I believe not. Fun square. What a mess of a battle, but this time around, it's uh, our enemy's mess. Which is wonderful. Fun square. Keep it up. What a disaster for Napoleon. Interesting how every other battle has been like, really cut throat, in a sense. And then the one I end up fighting against, uh, Napoleon, uh, turns into an absolute mess. The flankers of the young guard, though, are, uh, kind of caught us off guard there. Let's regroup here. We're not, we're not going anywhere fast here. Right now. Heavy cavalry battle over here. We are winning, but only because uh, the square there is aiding us. Right. French heavy cavalry was broken. Drop the squares. The infantry will now advance. Napoleon has uh, moved over to that side. Right now, I can't believe my luck that I've been able to uh, thwart Napoleon in the way that I have. My infantry is streaming forwards. This young guard unit, though. There's only a hundred of them. Oh, if they're going to stay that close together, the volley will on them will be legendary. Maybe not. Okay, you're outpacing the rest of the army. Hold there for now. Oh, the rest, now they're attacking. And it's all cavalry in form squares. How can you not break? This is, uh, you know what, this is uh, when I should charge. Get the Belgians. Move into the square. And these two units on the flank. I should have moved up the cannons at this point. I should have moved them a long time ago. Enemy light cavalry. It's Bavarian... Uh, Bavarian Chevalier. And... Uh, French Dragoons. I mean Hussars. I'm not saying dragoons. What are you guys doing all the way? Oh, they're still chasing that bastard. Right, get my bloody lances after them then. Bloody young guard. How how is he micromanaging uh, that unit so well, while all other units he's uh, throwing away like all the other stupid AI moves that the AI always makes. But the young guard is being expertly maneuvered in a way to uh, 
destroy me. Come on, get rid of those hussars already. It's because of the squares, they're formed in a bad way. Oh, now they're broken. Drop the squares and form into lines. Even my alarms seem to have a trouble dealing with them. Now let's deal with the last bit of infantry over there. Let's have the heavy cavalry move. Flank. And then everyone move forward. Go on, kill them already. A young guard flanker unit. Then we have French Bavarian Chevaliers. I guess the enemy intends to just hold their position. Oh, they're charging out now. Meet them. Inspired, an inspired charge. There's tons of gunfire going in. What, you haven't beaten? Oh, it's the Chevaliers now. Right, let's, uh, or maybe not the light infantry. And now the heavy cavalry upon that. And the infantry will charge. The light infantry will set up. Hold your fire though. Our men are running. Oh, they were broken over here. My alarms were broken. Benningsen will go and charge Napoleon. Maybe not to the point where the Chevaliers will get to attack us. They're all defeated now. Right, this Napoleon guy doesn't seem too terrible. I do think we can make it. I do think we can make it. I didn't realize I'd order the cannons this far forward. You can set up there and you can start lobbing shots towards them. Shame they're on my uh, lances. That was a mistake. Should have realized that the uh, Chevalier is a medium to heavy unit, and they would. Oh, he's leaving the. Oh, he's leaving the field. That unit just left the field. Napoleon isn't though. Or he isn't yet. If I need, if need be, Napoleon, I'll sh put a cannonball through you and send you back to f Paris. Of course, you cannot kill Napoleon. You can only wound him. Let's not have you uh, anywhere in, in front of a cannon. Even our own. Go ahead, fire. Why is it only one cannon that's firing? I only kind of need one good shot to rip through here. Anyways, uh, not to drag out time, because I already spent so much time. We know that we are victorious here. It, the only matter is if Napoleon is is going to get wounded or if he's going to be uh, he's going to be able to leave. He intercepted, so even uh, yeah, I'll be able to follow up and attack the town and destroy it there. So we know what fate awaits him. He'll go back. On a little cart, wounded to Paris. And here we have the victory of Napoleon. We deployed 2,000 men against his 3,600. 
he lost 3,100 men, leaving only about 500. We lost about 900 men, where we remain then at 1,300. And I have plenty of reinforcements coming in. So, uh, there's not going to be anything left of uh, poor Boney. I'm going to be able to send in even more troops here. He do gain some local partisans, but nothing. I'm going to demand... Oh, he accepted... Great! He accepted surrender. We get no money out of it, though. And we rob this army of its replenishment. Great. Napoleon accepted and was forced away. Now this is back in our hands, or allied hands, I should say. Should see about giving this region back to the Austrians, as surely they need it, like everything else. With this under our control, as I already mentioned, next step would be... Well, first we're going to rout out the French. We're going to possibly leave one army to hold uh, sway with the... Uh, or follow up their attack. The Austrians' attack seemed to be going north and then down at Bavaria. So one army could follow them into that battle while the rest would be achieving our plan here. Opening up a road for the um, Prussians to march through all the way through their holdings onto French territory. This guy is having quite a bit of trouble getting there. The French are blocking all the bridges everywhere. This one he got through, so he should be able to now be able to sneak in and steal technology. They had blocked their, this bridge and then this bridge of course, so I was unable to get through, but that's nice. And a bit of a shit battle because the uh, even with the amount of, uh, I mean, with the poor uh, decision here by the AI, uh, even with that, I was I lost almost a thousand men. But uh, victory is victory, and I'll say as I always say. Hopefully, you guys enjoy this, and hopefully, I'll see you guys for the next one. I.